Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Coming up, loose lips sink ships, loose minds mean a miss when it counts. Tim Pillbeam looks at what happens when your scope goes limp. Hunting tourists, forget sun, sea and sangria, it's saddle soap, scarlet and stirrup cups. We're out with a party of Americans and the Blackmore and Spotford Vale. I go to Denmark to find out why trophy hunting is good for animals. They love it. First, we're out stalking CWDs in Bedfordshire. Unlike WMDs, we have proof they exist. It's more from the Variety Tour. Ulf Lindroth has the best mwahaha in the business. <laughs> nice. <laughs> the Swede is also one of the best shots we know. Today, he's after his first ever Chinese water deer. It's also his first time in the UK. First lunch check the other day. I'm going to have a go with these. Let's see. They're very different from back home. Nice to get out of the snow. Remember the Variety Tour? A deer stalking trip across the south of England sponsored by Zeiss, Zawa, Hornady and Diana Hunting? The Variety Tour hunters are paired up today and Dom is also hoping to get a chance at this funny little deer. But probably not as much as Paul. I know there's a lot of animals out here, so um, we'll try and pick out one of the cull animals and yeah. get in close enough to uh, get a shot. Yeah. He's had a bit of a dry spell leading up to this morning, so he's rubbing his lucky charm to ensure the deer play the game for his clients. Normally when I'm struggling with uh, the acting, I give it a quick little rub and it works. But it hasn't worked for the last five days, because everyone keeps reminding me. I keep drawing blank when everyone else is bringing animals back, but today's going to be OK. Stalking Chinese involves making the most of hedgerows and the topography. In the early morning light, they can be tougher than their reputation leads you to believe. Saying that, within half an hour, Paul spots a young female on the opposite side of the stubble field. It's going to mean a crawl. You see the... I also see the one now. Yeah, I've seen one. That one's good. Okay. That one's okay to shoot. It's just as she steps forward, but she drops nonetheless. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's nice. Pressure nice on. Yeah, <laughs> good. good. Right, we're going to have a look, see what we've got. And, yeah. Uh, it's be yeah, it's a new species. New species, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Young female, this yep. year's youngster. So that would have been born in May. Okay, yeah. Yeah, good, good clean animal. Really, yeah. really healthy animal. Yeah. They're nice. This is totally new, but really nice. It's just nice to see the country also, and different terrain. And as I said, it's always nice to crawl around a little bit, and get on down on your get down on your belly and shoot prone. It's always Rolling nice. In the mud with Paul. Yeah, very nice. <laughs> Even at distance, the shot looks like it has caused a lot of damage. Dom's impressed by the outshot from the Hornady Super Performance. Yeah, so, so, so sometimes if you know if your deer runs on, obviously you, you come to the shop site first of all and look for an outshot, um, some sign of you know hair or or blood or something to give you an idea of where to go but um, I think it's safe to say that the bullet today left I mean obviously the animal on the ground but one hell of an outshot there's hair blood lung you know I think even Stevie Wonder could probably have followed that deer up. Dom has shot one CWD before so knows the score but is clearly feeling a bit suspicious this morning. Can't, right, okay. can't, can't. Um, the lucky coin worked the five out in blank has now been broken. Two fields over, Paul is happy there's another good cull candidate. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Be happy, okay. I'll wait for it to stop. Okay. Give me a figure of a shape, stop her up, okay? Okay. Dom takes his chance. She jumps forward, but the shot is good. No, that's that's entry. Yeah. That's bang on. Oh yeah. Just dropped it out. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was exactly where I was aiming, so that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Paul. Well good shot. I don't know how you managed to get a man with a cough this bad anywhere close to a deer, but thanks very much. That's a double. Uh, you can go home with your head held high today. I'll be called out again before we finish, I think. <laughs> 
Paul has had a busy week catering for a load of international hunters, but he's brought home the bacon today. Or should that be the crispy fried deer? A lovely brace of Chinese water deer there, and if you'd like to see more of Ulf's shooting skills, including him freehand shooting out to 600 metres, click on the link that's appeared up there behind me. Now someone who received a police caution for his freehand shooting, it's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. Anti-hunters are whining about pro-hunting TV personality Susanna Constantine. Her 10-year-old daughter shot her first duck and British TV host posted the pics on Facebook. A rugby star has been out in Mongolia hunting rabbits with hawks and foxes with eagles. Australia and Barbarians Nick Cummins, known as the Honey Badger, posted a series of images on Twitter and Instagram from the Altai Mountains, a range that crosses the Russian, Chinese, Kazakh and Mongolian borders. Do you want to win a pair of Wellington boots? Here's a 10 seconds to enter competition for all to win a pair of Harkila Forester boots that normally sell for £200. Visit bit.ly forward slash Harkila. There's a new US injured soldier rehab scheme that's centred around big game. Heroes hunting takes combat veterans out after American wildlife, like this pronghorn antelope hunt they posted on YouTube. Trips are funded through donations. Did you fall off whilst hunting and did you capture it on camera? If so, you could win a magnum of champagne. The Countryside Alliance have launched the Tumblers Club competition, open to amateurs only. Closing date for entries is the 1st of March 2015. Email photos to hunting at countrysidealliance.org including your name, address and photo caption. And finally, we don't have a film, we don't even have a photograph. But to the guy who spotted Roy towing his Argo cat on the M25, waved and then went in front of him at the Dartford Crossing to pay for his toll, thank you very much. Roy is delighted. You are now to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for fat. Now the fox hunting season has officially opened, except of course without the foxes. I've been down to Dorset to meet a couple of people who are turning it into big business. The Queen's Arms in Corton Denham, a sleepy village in Dorset, home to horse power. I'm a motorhead. <laughs> I'm going to take this Aston Martin to the uh, coast and uh test it out. <laughs> okay, that's an American who is not hunting. His wife and two friends, however, are hunting. We're, we're fine with that. Not jealous at all. They should be jealous of us, I think. This happy group is togged up and ready to go out for one of the finest days the English countryside has to offer. So let's start with the togging. Is that normal for Americans? It is, and when I first started hunting, I thought, boy, there's way too much emphasis on the clothing. But when you learn why you wear this, it's out of respect to the landowners who allow us to hunt on their property, well, then that makes sense. I hunt with Casanova Hunt, which is up near Warrington, Virginia. And we're with Caroline Hunt in Caroline, Virginia, and also Casanova Hunt. And we're very fortunate we have some really nice hunts near us. There you have it. They take it as seriously as we do. Right, let's fast forward to the meet. Here is the hunting tour operator who brought the Americans here. That's true, we're not really in the right car for following today. <laughs> we had a job parking it. This is a lovely bit of classic Blackmore Vale, vale country. You've got quite open, lovely hedges, uh, and today Mike Felton is our master. He looks after that central part of the Blackmore Vale. This Vale country is the famous stuff. Um, you know, good dairy country, lovely manicured hedges. If hounds run, there's a lot of fun to be had down here. It's quite nice, you know, not everybody hunts, not everyone wants to hunt every day, and it's really nice that we can include spouses, friends, children, if they want to come and soak up some of the atmosphere here without getting on a horse. It's nice to see people go to such lengths, the horses are so beautifully turned out, coats are clean, buttons are shining, it's something quite special. I'd like to see uh, three very muddy coats from my mounted followers, three very muddy coats but big smiles, uh, and I would like to see a not so muddy coat for, for Mike here as we step out of the car looking still like James Bond. Oh hello, I've already got a muddy coat. <laughs> Four muddy coats. <laughs> the Americans mount up. They are no slouches when it comes to funny English tack. Uh, we have a standing martingale, so we don't normally have these rings like this, but so it's tied back, but this is pretty much the same setup we do in the States. 
We're used to this. It feels like we're right at home. <laughs> and a very nice horse. Hunting people being hunting people are delighted to see other hunting people. And take them round my house tomorrow evening for a quick drink and show them some of my pictures and something else to fill in their programme. So long live Americans. And there's a welcome from the MFH too. If I could just interrupt this drinks party for a moment, please. Uh, can I also just extend a welcome to some American visitors here today. Very nice to see you. Welcome to the BV. I hope you don't get too closely acquainted with our mud. So Mike and Ben are off with the Aston, the others are on horses and I hitch a ride with the quad bikes. As well as 60 people on horseback, there are 40 on foot in cars on motorbikes and on quads. That's 100 people in a small rural area, keen enough to take a whole Monday off to go hunting. Star of the field is Charlotte on Cracker. Cracker is 35 years old, Charlotte is just six. We are trail hunting today and the first cover to draw is a patch of rough land by a brook. A roebuck gets up, where haunch as hunting people say, and it heads off into the rest of Dorset. It's a lot easier to keep up with the action on a horse, but it is a lot easier to film as a foot follower. The rest of the day I spend with the folk in their various vehicles trying to intercept the hunt as it goes past. One of them has invented a clever way to watch proceedings from the comfort of the top of his car. Oh, no, I was getting told off for getting up on the roof and denting it in, so I made this up to stop that. And, uh, Hey presto, I come up with this to keep within the law of the back end of the truck. Some of the followers have less good ideas. I always come hunting in these shoes. <laughs> I catch up with one of our Americans. That's going great so far. One of the foot followers is the farmer on whose land we start. Yeah, first meet on the farm since we've been here in 11 years, having moved down from Oxfordshire, so it's nice to see everyone out today. Yeah, very good. Yeah. It's nice to see the older generation, uh, yeah, especially the old, the old people following and it's all part of the countryside and it's nice to, to see them getting involved and, and some of the young children here as well. So. At the end of the day, trails have been followed and the Americans have a couple of jumps to report. <laughs> Rocky yeah. launched off and he like goes on the bank and he's like laid out <laughs> so I'm like sitting him and I'm like, OK, home. come on, come on. And he next finally gets next in and, and he got <laughs> did up Did you hold your next up? He did. Yes, I did. He grabbed yeah, the next tab and he kicked for him to go on up no, and he did. him his full head when he uh, jumped. Looks like they are coming again. If you want to enjoy traditional English fox hunting, even if for the time being it's without the fox, visit blackthornandbrook.com. Good to see hunting alive, kicking and thriving despite the worst that Tony Blair could do to it. Now it is a truth universally acknowledged that the bigger the animal you shoot, the larger the headline you create in your local newspaper. I've been abroad to find out why hunting is good for big game. <laughs> There's been a lot of flapping in the media recently about trophy hunting, foreigners taking pot shots at elephants and rhinos. Well, I haven't come to Africa to find out more about it. I've come to Denmark. I'm at the Trophy Hunting Museum in fabulous Valdemar's Castle to meet Klaus Olesen. He is going to show me Europe's largest collection of big game trophies that's open to the public and he runs nature courses here for schools too. He wants to explain to me why big game hunting helps big game. And for example, if you take the, the lions, they are a very good example. In uh, Tanzania, they pay for their own existence because when they take some of their Maasai people's calves, uh, cows, they pay them. In Tanzania, they have the world's largest populations of wild lion due to the trophy hunt. So supposing there was no hunting? They don't have the money. The Kenya can be the other example. They don't have any trophy hunting. There is no uh, compensation paid. So the, the Maasai, they poison the lions. When they take one of their cows, they put poisons in their body and when they come back, there's no problem with the lions anymore because they are poisoned and dead. Klaus points out that southern white rhino numbers have increased to around 20,000 from a low of 2,000 in the 1980s, thanks to the money from big game hunting. What's knocking the numbers back today is poaching, not hunting. Is that real rhino horn behind you, Klaus? Nope, we don't dare to have the right rhino horn. The price is so enormous high, so it's to invite burglars to come here and take it. If that was real rhino horn, how much would that cost? I think about uh, three, four hundred thousand euros. 
One of the arguments against hunting is that the people who do it must be weird to want to knock over a big beautiful animal. I go shooting as well and hunting and I don't think I am sadistic or whatever you're pointing at but I think I, I take part of the nature. I am a living, living in it and living with it and I think it's the same with the trophy hunter. They take part and every day some animals are going to die one way or another. And if we can benefit to uh, give benefits to the local populations throughout that they are providing trophies for hunters, I think it's very good. It's not always about African animals. Klaus has this shaggy sheep story from Pakistan. The markers is a very good example. In the 1960s, there was only 30 left of this Casimir marker. Exactly the same story as with the rhinos. It's eat the same food as their uh, livestock did, so they have to get some benefit out of it. There is no trophy hunting, but there was a Danish guy. He said, if you stop the poaching, I'll pay you $10,000 next year. And in 1983, uh, the Pakistan government thought, now the population is big enough to we can allow one bull to be shot. But nowadays, there are three populations of different macros, and there is 15 of them released every year for trophy hunting. And it's the hunters pays about 100 to 150 thousand dollars each license, and the money gets back to the local areas where the villages is running their schools, their healthcare systems for the benefit of the trophy hunt. So they are, think it's very good to have these macro because they can get much more out of them than they can of their own uh, livestock. Have you got any records here? Any world records? Yes, I got. I got this one. This is the world record. That one? Yes. <laughs> yeah. That one looks bigger, frankly. Yes, but this is... <laughs> it's an East African Cedar Tunga. Ah, East African Cedar Tunga. Yeah. Well, that's a new one on me. So, now for some fun for you. How good are you at your big game species? Here's a quiz. Rules are simple. You get a few seconds of the animal, then its name pops up on the screen. No prizes, no pack drill. Off you go. That's it. For more about this museum, go to borgerhinchfonden.dk. Well, I hope you got 10 out of 10 there, class. Now, shooting is not just about accuracy of identification, it's about accuracy of shot placement. Here's Tim Pillbeam to show you how to stop your scope from becoming wobbly. Most of us are pretty good at looking after our shooting kit, otherwise it gets expensive and or you start missing. To show how important it is to keep everything locked down, sporting rifle contributor Tim Pillbeam is going to see what happens to your zero when you loosen the scope mounts on a rimfire and a full bore rifle. First up it's the 17HMR. I'll be just loosening these mounts off and we'll just look at the, uh, the change of point and impact. We're shooting at 100 metres here. So we should see a fair bit of change. It could be quite tricky because this is a rimfire and there's not much recoil, but I'm rather hoping if I just loosen off, let's say, the rear side, the rear mount, that we'll just see a change of point of impact. So the screw tension is about 45 inch pounds. Let's just drop it down to, to 20, then make this loose, loosen it off and see what happens, and hopefully we'll see some changes. Uh, what's happened actually is you can see the point of impact actually moved probably two inches up and an inch to the left. I didn't think, in fact, that the, uh, it would move that much. But just, just I backed it off to about ten, um, five inch pound, and uh, I moved the scope a wee bit, and it's moved it uh, a good two inches. So I'm quite quite surprised by that. So uh, the, seat, the, the most important thing is to make sure your mounts are kept 
pretty tight. The results show significant deviation. Next up is the centerfire rifle with a lot more kick. It's a 270 WSM, quite a punchy rifle. Horrible, it? It's a light rifle as well, so therefore a lot of that force can be coming back at me. Uh, and this is when really good quality mounts come into it because uh, if they're not tight enough, things will move. And by God, they will do with this recoil. Okay, I was doing the rifle. First shot, second shot, third shot. So the rifle was more or less zeroed. Uh, I loosened the, the mounts from uh, 60 inch pounds to 30. It didn't really make a huge difference. Then I loosened the mounts down to uh, five inch pounds. And immediately, look at this. I've got a three inch uh, rise in point of impact. Demonstrates it really, really well. I'm really pleased about that. So maybe it's not breathing trigger weight, wind temperature, incline or star sign. Maybe it is just a case of getting a grip on that scope. For more information about Sportsmatch, go to sportsmatchuk.com. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. First up, here's how to combine a shooting trip with a Mediterranean holiday. Wild Jaeger is taking paying hunters to the island of Klavnik off the Croatian mainland in search of fallow deer and what he calls Dalmatian ram. Sadly, that's not sheep with spots. More laid-back South European shooting. Revax Films teams up with French bird shooting operator Sabanac for a duck day. And the excellent Seasons TV, mainly in France these days, offers wild boar and deer in one productive drive. This clip is from its film Avec les Chiens dans la Batou with the dogs in the hunt coming out soon. Two films from very different Zealands now. North Zealand hunting hunter is after foxes on the island of Zealand in Denmark. On the other side of the world, Josh James Kiwi Bushman is calling red stags in the rut. This film is only just out, though it dates from 2012. Josh heads up a river in South Westland before the government bombed it up with 1080 poison. He says the area is now a death zone overrun by rats. The first films are coming out about the 2014 hunting season in North America. Spruce Grouse Hunting Open Day 2014 14 shows William Larkham Jr. after birds and a lost GoPro camera. The Field Archer offers deer hunting full bow hunting season 5 highlights. It is his record of the New Jersey bow hunting season with compound and crossbow. And finally, Texas native Zero Zero sends in his film Stalk Hunting White Tailed Deer with a 300 AAC Blackout AR 15. It is very Texas. A nice walk through Texas Hill Country after White Tailed Deer with a 300 AAC Blackout upper 16 inch carbine gas system Sota Arms barrel 15 inch free plate tube from Midwest Industries and standard A2 flash hider, just in case the deer are in any doubt. That's it for this week. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. If you don't like those, how about these? Air gunners are putting the squeeze on squirrels in the new airheads, the fortnightly show for air gunners. James Martington faces a grey wave of the pests in his back garden. It's one man against hundreds. Hot Air Airgun News leads on a scary Halloween squirrel, and Air Streaming has the cream of YouTube out after squirrels as well as Arab Desert Quail. In other features, Darren shows how to mount a night vision unit and tells top tip this week is about how air gunners can stop the rot. It will be the best 12 minutes 54 seconds you have had all week. Click on the link on the screen. Meanwhile, we are learning how Bowman makes clay traps in Schools Challenge TV this week. The family firm is just a couple of years off its 50th birthday, and Andrew Davidson is still the hands-on boss he ever was. That's not all. Commonwealth Games double trap silver medalist Matt French describes his win, and Dry Fire shows off its shooting setup, where you can practice shooting with your own gun in the comfort of your living room. Click on the link on the screen for Schools Challenge TV. Well, we are back next week. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Go to our webpage if you haven't already. Fieldsportschannel.tv. Click to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter. Or pop your email address into our constant contact box and we'll constantly contact you about our programme. Field Sports Britain, it's at 7pm every Wednesday UK time. This has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing and goodbye.